Welcome to a series of videos on trigonometric identities. This video will review the reciprocal, quotient, and Pythagorean identities, and the goal is to use these identities to determine function values. The reciprocal identities, cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta, secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta, and cotangent theta is equal to one over tangent theta. And the quotient identities, tangent theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta, and lastly, cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Now we've already discussed these earlier in the semester, so we're gonna go ahead and move along to the Pythagorean identities, but we will use these in some of the problems later. So the three Pythagorean identities are sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one, tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, and lastly, one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Let's take a closer look at this first Pythagorean identity, but before we do that, let's take a look at this right triangle. One of the first formulas that we learn about right triangles is the Pythagorean theorem, which states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the two legs. So we're gonna use this right triangle to verify this identity which states that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. Well, sine of theta would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, or a over c. So sine squared theta would be a over c squared, plus cosine squared theta. Well, the cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or b over c. But again, we're going to square it because it's cosine squared theta is equal to one. Let's go ahead and square these fractions, a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared equals one. Here we have a common denominator, so we have a squared plus b squared over c squared equals one. But we just stated earlier that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we have c squared over c squared is equal to one, which does verify that identity. And these others can be done in a similar fashion. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple problems. Here we're given that cosine theta is equal to three-fourths and theta is in the fourth quadrant, and we want to determine sine theta and tangent theta. We can use this first identity to determine the value of sine theta, since we're given cosine theta. So this states that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, or three-fourths squared, must equal one. So let's go ahead and solve this for sine theta. 3 fourths squared would be 9 sixteenths. Now subtracting 9 sixteenths on both sides, I know that one is 16 sixteenths, so 16 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths would give us 7 sixteenths. So to find sine theta, we'll take the square root of both sides, and we have sine theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of seven over the square root of 16, which is four. Now we have to determine whether we're going to take the positive or negative value of sine theta, and that's why they told us that the angle is in the fourth quadrant. If we're in the fourth quadrant, the y coordinate would be negative, therefore sine theta would be negative. So our final value for sine theta is equal to negative square root seven over four. Next, to find tangent theta, we can use this identity since we know both sine theta and cosine theta tan theta is equal to sine theta, which is negative square root seven over four, divided by cosine theta, which is given as three-fourths. But we could multiply the top and the bottom by four to obtain the value of tangent theta as negative square root seven over three. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. Here we're given that tangent theta is equal to negative five-thirds, where theta is in the second quadrant, and we want to use the identities to determine secant theta and sine theta. Again, there are several ways to determine these function values, but right now we're just practicing using these identities. So in order to find secant theta, we could use the second identity, which states that tangent squared theta, or negative five-thirds squared, plus one must equal secant squared theta. This would simplify to 25 ninths plus one equals secant squared theta. 
I know that 1 is 9 ninths, so 9 ninths plus 25 ninths would be 34 ninths. Taking the square root of both sides, secant theta equals plus or minus the square root of 34 over the square root of 9, which is 3. Next, we're in the second quadrant. Remember, cosecant theta is equal to r over x. The x-coordinate would be negative here. Therefore, cosecant theta is negative. Now, this last one can be a little bit trickier. We want to determine sine theta, which is equal to 1 over cosecant theta, but we don't have cosecant. But we could find cosecant using this identity and then just taking the reciprocal of that. So let's go ahead and do that. But what we could do is find cosecant theta and then take the reciprocal to find sine theta. So let's try using this one. We'd have one plus cotangent squared theta. Remember, cotangent theta is a reciprocal of tangent theta. So if tangent is negative five-thirds, cotangent would be negative three-fifths. So we'd have negative three-fifths squared equals cosecant squared theta. Okay, to save a little bit of time, this would be nine twenty-fifths plus twenty-five twenty-fifths. So that'd be thirty-four twenty-fifths equals cosecant squared theta. Taking the square root on both sides, we have cosecant theta equals, equals square root of thirty-four over five. Again, cosecant involves y, and y is positive in the second quadrant, so we're only going to take the positive value for this function, which leads us to sine theta would be the reciprocal of this, or five over the square root of 34, and rationalizing this would lead us to our final function value of five square root 34 over 34. So quite a bit of work on this problem. Let's see if we have time for one more. Here we're given the point negative two, negative four is on the terminal side of theta, and we want to find the exact values of the six trig functions. So what this tells us is that x is equal to negative two, y is equal to negative four, and remember that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, which means that r squared is equal to negative two squared, or four, plus negative four squared, or sixteen, well, if r squared equals 20, r would equal two square root five. So doing a little bit of review here, we know that sine theta is equal to y over r, so we'd have negative four over two square root five. Now this can be simplified and also rationalized to obtain the function value of negative two square root five over five. Well, next we know that cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. So the reciprocal would be two square root five over negative four. And again, this simplifies as well. So we have negative square root five over two. Next, let's find cosine theta, which is equal to x over r. So negative two over two square root five. Again, we'll simplify and rationalize so here we're gonna have negative square root five over five. And the reciprocal of cosine theta would be secant theta. So the reciprocal of this, we'd have two square root of five over negative two. This simplifies nicely to negative square root five. And we have two more. We know that tangent theta is equal to y over x. So negative four over negative two, that, that would equal two. And then lastly, cotangent theta is reciprocal of tangent theta. So the reciprocal of two would be one half. So here we use several of the reciprocal identities to help us find these function values. Okay, I think that's enough. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you and have a good day.